Uh, so today I'm here to talk about how to stick to your beauty ban or your no buy. These are going to be some of the tips and strategies that I've been using in order not to purchase new products in 2014 and by this I mean beauty products. So in this video I'm going to talk about five tips and tricks that I've been using to kind of curb my desire to spend. So the first tip is something that limits your buyable product, taking the whole basket of products that's out there, everything that's out there in the world, and putting a criteria on the things that you're going to buy so that you can only buy a subset of it. And this really works because it focuses your mind on certain products or certain criteria. And I'll be more specific because right now it's kind of floofy and up in the air. For me, in 2014, I decided to go cruelty free. And this really limits the types of brands that I can purchase. So you don't have to go cruelty free. It's important here to choose something that matters to you, something that you believe in. A few other criteria you could use is maybe to go paraben free if that's something that matters to you, or perhaps you could go natural and organic and only buy products that meet that criteria or you could look at where the product is made maybe you want to stay local and buy only products that are made in Canada or if you live in the US you might want to buy products that are only made in the US so there are a lot of ways that you can cut down on your buyable products basically setting a criteria for new products that come into your household my second strategy or tip is to look beyond the packaging. So I'm really drawn in by like shiny new things. I really love like fancy packaging and I'm just really, really drawn to it. So in 2014, I've been trying instead to look at the product that's inside, specifically the color. There isn't really all that much that is new and exciting in terms of color in the beauty world. Two colors that may swatch very differently may still look the same on your eye because you've blended it out so much. An example of this is the Too Faced Chocolate Bar Eye Palette. I wanted this palette so badly, I had no reason not to buy it because I love the packaging, I love chocolate, I loved the neutral eyeshadows, Too Faced was cruelty free, it was just the perfect palette for me. But I really wanted to hold back and think about it because I didn't want to spend the 50 or 60 dollars or however much it is to pick up that palette when I have so many palettes in my collection. So I looked in my collection and sure enough I have tons of neutral chocolatey type eyeshadow palettes that would be very similar to the Too Faced palette. So that's where I kind of held back and decided that I had everything I needed and I did not need to add this palette to my collection. My third tip is to shop your own stash and this is a really popular one and it's popular for a good reason because it does work. I have a basket of goodies I guess that are all untried. So these are brand new products that I've purchased but I haven't had a chance to either test out or use yet and I separated all of that from the collection that's either been swatched or tested or it's currently in use. So all of my products that are currently in use are in like these clear acrylic drawers and I can easily see what I have and reach for them on a daily basis. So what happens is when I want to try something new, I will look in my set of untrieds and pick out exactly what I need. Or if I'm running low on a product, say like a eye makeup remover, which I am running low on, I'll go through my set of untried products, my brand new products, and I'll go through and I'll pick out like the eye makeup remover that I want to try next. So that's one strategy if you're like me and you have a lot of products that you haven't used yet because I don't tend to dig into everything right away. You can still shop your stash if you have kind of tried everything or if you've swatched everything. That's still okay. You can still shop your stash. What I would do here is I would rotate my products and I actually do this myself as well. Basically, I use one set of products for a week or a month or however long it takes for you to get a little bit bored of those products. So I'll go through my existing stash and I'll find maybe a makeup palette that I haven't used in a really long time but that I used to love and I'll switch that out and use that instead for like a week or a month or however long and then I'll just do that like rotate my products over and over again. So what you're doing is you're basically going through your stash and you're finding old products that you used to love and rediscovering them and that to me is even better than going out and buying something brand new. 
My fourth tip is to shop online. And this may sound counterintuitive, but when I feel the urge to spend, I actually go to a website like say Sephora or more recently it was Barney's. So I went to the Barney's website and I put a bunch of stuff into my basket. You had to spend I think $250 to get this bonus. It was like a crazy like good bonus. And I was going to send everything to my US mailbox. So I went on and I don't think of this as a strategy when I go on. I I actually go online with the intention of purchasing. So I go online, I put all these things into my cart, and I think I had around $300 worth of makeup, and it was stuff I really wanted because I researched it all, it was all cruelty free, I was like really passionate about it, I really really wanted it, and then when I'm about to check out, I pause. and. I either walk away for half an hour to an hour, or I just close the browser and I do something else for half an hour to an hour. So the key here is to have a little bit of time from when you're going to enter your credit card information to actually doing it. And if after the hour or so I really, really wanted the products still, I would have purchased them. And to me that's okay because, you know, I've thought about it and I've decided, I've made a conscious choice, it's not an impulse purchase, but what invariably happens is I walk away for half an hour to an hour and when I come back I've lost the urge to buy those products but still I've satisfied my urge to shop which is odd because I didn't actually buy anything so shopping online or rather browsing online for me is um, almost as good as actually buying the products my fifth and final strategy that I'm going to share with you today that's been really working for me is to reorganize your makeup or to create like a project with your existing collection. A lot of the time I will forget what I have in my current collection, especially if I'm watching YouTube videos or I'm like browsing blogs and websites on new products, which I do quite often and I still do that a lot. When I see shiny new things, I often forget what I already have and it just like goes out of my mind and I blank out. It's really bizarre. So what this tip does is it shows you again how much you have and all of the things you have. So one way to do this is to reorganize your makeup and I've already done this but basically I take out all of my makeup, like all of it, I just spread it out onto the ground and I start um, kind of moving stuff around and reorganizing. This is where I reorganize like my brand new makeup from stuff that I've dug into already. But the process of just seeing everything laid out in front of you is very impactful. You kind of look at it and you are in disbelief because there is so much. And even if you have like a smaller collection, I guarantee that you will still feel that it is way more than you thought you had. I think our minds play tricks on us and yeah, we just don't realize how much we've accumulated until you see it all in front of you. The other thing I've been working on is categorizing my makeup. So I've started with um, my nail polish. I'm basically swatching all of my nail polishes. I've started with Julep and a few others, but I'm doing swatch sticks and I'm basically doing an Excel spreadsheet and doing an inventory of all my nail polishes. And when I'm done that, I'll move on to other products. So this is basically a project that gets you like tactile with your makeup. So you're like pulling it out, you're playing with it, you're categorizing it, you're looking at it, you're constantly reminded by how much you have. And that really works for me because I just feel a little bit guilty about buying more if I have so much already. So those are my five tips and tricks that I have to share on what's been working for me to keep to my beauty ban or my no buy. If you have any tips and tricks that you find work for you, please leave them in the comment section down below as I would love to hear about them. I just am always wanting to learn more about how to stay on my beauty ban and to curb my spending. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful and until I see you again, please take care and bye for now.